Roster management is more difficult now than ever before. Is it time for Coach Davis to add a general manager? You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? It's Thursday, September 19th, 2024. Welcome into the Locked On Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shea, joined today by our guy, Coach Bill Robinson, the head coach of the Milligan University Buffaloes and a two-decade veteran of the Carolina Basketball School, and now we can say a published author. My guy, it's great stuff. You're joining us at the place to get your Tar Heels content every single day. It's all part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making us your first listen or watch, and we want to welcome in all the everydayers, all the members of the Locked On Tar Heels Discord, and of course, our Locked On Tar Heels insiders. Glad you're all here. This episode is brought to you by our good friends at FanDuel. Right now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Oh man, going to be a fun show today. Coach and I were just talking about this. Several different conversations that are each going to kind of be isolated to our three segments, uh, but each very interesting about essentially the state of, of college athletics right now. And so we start with, um, you know, the big news on, on Wednesday was that Woj is leaving the, leaving the, the whole thing behind. We're not going to know draft picks early anymore because he's going to St. Bonaventures to be their GM. So we got to ask, is it time for Carolina to do that? Also big in the news in the past couple of days is the fact that Tennessee football is going to add a talent fee next season to their ticket prices. What that? What is that going to mean for all of us as we engage with sports? And then Braylon Mullins follows Derek Dixon and cancels a couple of his future visits. Good news for the heels. We're going to get Coach's take on that. Speaking of Coach, it is a busy week for our guy. His team, the Milligan Buffaloes, have started their first week of practice this week, three hours long just about every day. And, uh, man, Coach has a lot going on in his life and is still out here making time. So, Coach, we are very grateful for that. And uh, as way of showing gratitude, let's pump this bad boy. Folks, if you haven't got your copy of Carolina Basketball School yet, you need to go buy it. Written by our guy, History, Stories, and Drills. You can pick it up on Amazon or if you'd like, a, uh, which is in the, that link's in the show notes, or if you'd like a signed copy, you can email coach to get that from him, wdrobinson at milligan.edu. All right, coach, I said it already, but the big news on Wednesday was the shocker that Adrian Wojnarowski, ESPN's famed NBA newsbreaker, is retiring from his role to be the general manager for the St. Bonaventure team. In the A-10, Coach, this is kind of wild and shocking. Uh, just at, at a big picture level then, it's time to ask the question, uh, as other schools are starting to do this, is it time for Carolina to officially pull the trigger on hiring a general manager for the basketball team? Yeah, I think the most shocking thing about it for me was that Woj and I are the same age because I always feel like he's so much older than I am, and I don't feel like I'm that old, but uh, that was the most shocking thing for me. No, I think it is, it's is—it's time to get ahead of some of these things, and the world is definitely changing. And, you, you again, talk about conference realignment and all that stuff. We feel like Carolina got caught behind and maybe had to react. We don't want to react in anything. We're, we're Carolina. We're, 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 we've got to be the big dogs, and the big dogs have to be out running ahead. And I feel like that's a big step to take. The problem with that is um, you have to have the right person to do that. That's right. Um, you have to be a Carolina guy. It would have to be somebody inside Hubert's circle. Hubert doesn't have a big circle. Uh, it's, it's pretty tight. And uh, who could that be? And that's, I think, would be the hardest thing is, is not do we get it, but who, who could fit the role the way that they would want it to be. So uh, I do think it's important. I think it's somebody that can – have a great relationship with uh, with Coach Davis. I think Bill Parcells, when he was coaching the Giants, said it best. You know, if you want me to to cook dinner, at least you can do is let me buy the groceries. So, you know, Hubert's going to want to coach the squad the way he wants to do it. He's going to have a lot of input, but he's got so much on his plate now with everything going on. I think he needs somebody in that role. And and I want to just clarify something you said there, talking about Coach Davis has a small circle. 
Um, I'm imagining you you don't mean like Hubert Davis doesn't have friends and he doesn't keep people around him. It's just that he's very selective about who that is. Right. I think he has a lot of friends. I think he's got a lot of contacts. I think he'll, he, he he. But when it comes to actually business I and mean, it's game day and it's OK, it's practice. It's it's going to it's going to be a really tight squad of who he listens to and and who he's going to have any kind of influence on, on what they do so when it comes to influence i think that's that circle is very small i think in life he's got a huge impact and he's got a lot of friends and a lot of family that's perfect thank you for making that distinction i just wanted to make sure i was processing what you were saying well there now what's interesting coach is last year carolina sort of made a step in this direction by hiring tj beisner away from kentucky who had but it, it wasn't his title wasn't directly general manager, but he, that's what he was doing, director of player personnel. Carolina hires TJ, but he's not officially on the basketball staff. He leads the, the secondary break, which is no longer in existence because of old well management coming in. And so things are still kind of murky with that at Carolina right now, figuring out exactly what's going on. Um, and so it, it is a day and age, though where teams are hiring someone to directly be on their staff, like what it sounds like Woj will do. Or let's go ahead and mention now, Coach, that Mac Brown has Pat Suttis on his staff, whose title is not only associate athletic director, but general manager for the football team. Yeah, there's so much going on in the office now that wasn't going on in the office when Dean Smith and Bill Guthridge were coaching. So you've got to be on top of things. And again, running out ahead of things and trying to anticipate things uh, that happen when it comes to NIL, when it comes to the portal, when it comes to uh, even the high school levels have changed so much with guys transferring from schools to schools and trying to make sure that you're on top of all the, all those things, even re-recruiting your own guys um, and, and making sure that, you know, Hey, this guy's solid for next year, regardless of what happens. All those things tie into needing another extra person to be able just to be able to juggle all that. And what's interesting about this to me is you you alluded to this, and I'm so glad you already went there. Let's flesh this out a little bit more. At the professional level, like I'm I'm thinking like the movie Draft Day for those who love that movie, right? Like the relationship of Kevin Costner to, to the head coach is like, my job as the general manager is to put this team together. Yes, I might ask for some input from the head coach, but my job is to put it together. Your job is to coach it. As you alluded to, Coach, this is quite, I mean, it is, it's got some shades of that, but it is quite different from what that would be. How would this look different in that regard? I, I think this is Huber's program and he's going to do what he wants to do with it. And rightly so. Exactly. I mean, he's the one, exactly. The buck stops with him. So he's, I don't see him giving a, a lot of freedom um, watching practice. He's the guy, he's running practice. He's not standing off. To the side letting his assistants now they still have a lot of impact and and you know but at the same time he's controlling everything and that's what you do as a head coach um you know i, I had my three-hour practice tonight and i had my coaches and they were assigned teams but when it comes down to how everything is run i'm still blowing the whistle stopping it, changing things and making sure it's done the way i want to that's what hubert's role is that's what he's going to do and i just don't see him turning over i mean the whole roster, that's what this is all about, is getting the very best talent that can mesh together. And Huber's not going to go out there and just get guys. He wants guys that fit Carolina basketball. And he has to have an, a GM who has that same heart, that same mind, to make sure that they recruit Carolina guys. And that's what we're looking at at this D1 level is, as you said, it's got to be two guys that are in complete lockstep. And it, and it really is, at this point, at this level, it's more about what the head coach wants and then the GM running that playbook rather than vice versa, like we would typically get at the at the professional level, which I know we're professionalizing this more. Um, but coach, I think also to your point uh, about this being coach's team, right? He made that it was about this time last year that he made that evidently clear that nah. The buck stops with Hubert Davis now, right? Like he started making that much more abundantly clear than he previously had. And I think that is a good thing. Um, just to give a little scope of the lay, lay of the land, folks, for you, CJ Moore from The Athletic did some research back on this just in the wake of the Woj news. Right now, there are 12 schools at the high major level. He didn't specify, but we're going to assume that means the five basketball power conferences, ACC, Big 12, Big East, Big 10, and SEC. 
There are 12 schools at that level that currently have someone with the GM title. And there are now, with Woj's addition, three at the mid-major level, which he included A-10, Mountain West, and American Conference. So it's St. Bonnie's and just two others at that level. So it's not prevalent everywhere, right? I wouldn't call it ubiquitous at this point. But it is something that the difference is, Coach, as you already said, you want to get out ahead of it, not being reactionary. And so while it's only 12, you want to be on that front line of leading the charge. So that said, Coach, let me ask you one more question about this. If you were in Hubert Davis's shoes, if you were, you know, as you said, dealing with everything he's dealing with from boosters to keynote speeches to uh, dealing with alum to actually dealing with his team, it's a move that you would go ahead and make in this climate of college athletics. I think the move right now is is to find somebody again who's who's got the heart of Carolina, and then finding somebody who really has a a, a maybe a their, their finger on the pulse of college basketball, and being able to find somebody who who you have a previous relationship with too. Not just a Carolina alum that maybe had played and you didn't really know, but somebody you have an actual personal relationship with, because it's going to come down to a, a relationship with where you can say no to a guy and he'll say, OK, all right, we'll go to the next one or say, well, OK, what do you think? And really trust that guy. But exactly. you have to have a relationship where you can say that's not the guy and you can't have somebody sit there and fight you on it. you got to have somebody who can say, OK, well, let's go to my next next ne next guy up. And I think that's that's what he's out there. Somebody's that's right. out. There. That's but, right. Uh, to find that. And and I think that's such a great point, Coach. Is he, Coach Davis has to be able to say no to whoever this is. But because it, I, I think a big part of it being somebody that he trusts is this person has to be have the cojones to be able to say no to Coach Davis at times, and Coach Davis trusts that, but not abuse that on either side. And man, that that is a very tricky razor's edge relationship to navigate. And so that's, as, as you've pointed out multiple times, that's why it's got to be just that right person that has all these skill sets. And so while you want to dive into this, you don't, it, it person over position, I think matters a ton in this conversation. And that's where I uh, think it's good to leave it unless you have anything else on it. No, I think that's where we're at. Uh, it, it would, the one thing that scares me is that you have mid-majors already adding it. So if I'm at Carolina and I see mid majors already adding it, I'm sitting there going, we we've got to we've got to step up to the plate. We've got to find this money to be able to hire another guy, um, and we've got to find that right person. So that's the biggest concern I would have. And interestingly, with this specific scenario with Woj, and I forget who reported this, but apparently it might have been Matt Norlander actually from CBS. At least one upon hearing the the wind of this, whenever ago at least one high major school reached out to see if they could pull Woj, apparently a school with national championship aspirations. It wasn't named. And he said, no, I'm going to my alma mater, sticking with the Bonnie. So I found that very interesting in this ordeal. And frankly, a breath of fresh air, if we're being honest. So coach, funny that we're going to talk about Tennessee, where you are right there in the thick of it. In fact, you were on campus there at Neyland Stadium over the weekend. Tennessee just announced a talent fee that will be added to football tickets starting next year. 10%. Is this something we're going to have to start dealing with now in college athletics? And what does it all mean? We'll get to that in just a second. Right after I tell you about FanDuel, you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel this summer, America's number one sports book, and I've typically been filling you in on a boost or a bonus, but now I got something a little bit different for you because as I said earlier, right now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial from NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. And then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. How about a little odd for us here, Coach, heading into Saturday? Carolina hosts their last non-conference opponent of the season, James Madison, coming to town. Carolina only favored by 10.5 in this game. The over-under is set at 47.5. So if you want to get in on that action or anything else, visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to download America number one sportsbook. This episode is also brought to you by our brand new partner, Roy. 
Tar Heels fans, have you heard about Roy? It stands for Return On You, and it's a new platform that lets you, the fans, get involved in NIL like never before by making contributions directly to your favorite athletes. By supporting players directly, you can help shape rosters, retain talent, and keep your favorite athletes out of the transfer portal. NIL has changed the game for athletes. Roy is changing the NIL game for fans. Why use Roy? Let me give you just one example. Exclusive content access. When you contribute to a successful campaign, you'll receive access to exclusive content from the athlete, such as announcement decisions, behind the scenes footage, and other personal reflections. So download Roy for iOS or Android and enter referral code LOCKED ON, and you'll automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5,000 cash. Visit joinroy.com for additional details. Again, get the Roy app on iOS or Android and start making an impact on your favorite team. Use referral code Locked On for an opportunity to win $5,000 cash. Visit joinroy.com for more details. No purchase necessary. It's void where prohibited. Get off the sidelines and into the NIL game with Roy. It was announced earlier this week that Tennessee football is going to start employing a talent fee 10% upcharge on their tickets next season. This is uh, all from a, a writing for or a reporting from the AP that I read. And these tickets, uh, this 10% is going to go directly to student athletes to help pay the players. It was announced Tuesday morning in an email that actually was sent out to season ticket holders. Coach, the direct language used was, quote, to help fund the proposed revenue share, end quote, because as a reminder, part of this as well is that the NCAA and the major conferences are currently working to settle three different antitrust lawsuits related to NIL compensation, and all these power conference schools are going to have to start paying out money in addition to all this other NIL stuff that's going on. So there's so many different financial stuff that has to be dealt with right now that this is where Tennessee is going. So coach, my question to you first is this. Is something like this uh, talent fee, whether this specifically or other value adds, a necessary evil in the new landscape of collegiate athletics? I think it's really dangerous path to go down because you've you've, you've already seen prices go up. Uh, Tennessee specifically, they took a section out, renovated it, took season ticket holders that had been there for years and told them that their their tickets were going to go way up because now instead of sitting on a bench, now you've got to a chair back and there's some people upset about some of the changes that have been made already. Um, but the bottom line is as long as you're winning, I think you can do stuff like this. So you're, you're maybe striking where the iron's hot right now in Tennessee because the team's playing really well. They obviously had a great win, a huge win on Saturday. But when, when you start doing this, people will jump on while things are good. When things are bad, you could see things going down, I, I think significantly. So, um, I do think it, it gives an opportunity for them maybe to, to try something and see if it works. Uh, I haven't heard of anybody else doing it, so let's let's give it a shot. Uh, if it doesn't work, go back to what you're doing. But I, I do think it's 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 all based on winning again. And if you're winning, people will jump on board. I'm curious if if the basketball team will do it too. I mean, talking about striking while the iron's hot, man. Tennessee basketball has been good for a while now under Rick Barnes, so it's. It's very interesting. Well, I, I, I'm with you. It is a slippery slope. On one hand, coach, I'll, I'll say I do appreciate the transparency to fans and say, look, we're going to do this and here's why we're doing it. Not, not that we're going to like it, but uh, a lot of people just say, hey, we're going up and deal with it. So, um, I, so what it makes me wonder, coach, is will this ultimately lead I mean, just as there's more and more and more of this type of thing lead to fewer fans attending games. I mean, I know ultimately people vote with their feet, but I, I don't know. What, what do you think about that? I, again, I think it's 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 something brand new. I think we're going to it take I think it's going to be a year. Uh, they should know the results from it early on. But for me, I don't want I don't want to raise money from the people that I care most about and I care about my fans. So I would rather say, okay, let's go find more sponsorship. Let, let's find some people that that have deep pockets. And instead of trying to hit the, the mom and pop that come to my games and, you know, they're hardworking people. That's what I love about Tennessee. These are good, honest, hardworking people. Um, they're, they, they, they're kind. They're loving. Why would we want to try to get more money out of our, our fans that we're trying to draw? Let's let's go find 
you know, some million billion dollar guy to start really investing into our program more. That's where my heart would be. And again, that's not the way business is. I understand I'm I may be a softie there, but at the same time, I don't want that that hardworking guy who's bringing his family to a game to have to pay more for it. And that's that's just my personal feeling. No, I, I think you're spot on with that. Like, let's before we literally tax the fan base, let's try to do everything. Let's exhaust every other possibility of emptying the coffers of the people who have these massive ad ad budgets that they can spend on stuff like this. Because let's be honest, in this whole day and age, whether it's new streaming services, whether it's, you know, advertising on uniforms and fields and other things like that, ad departments are already having to think differently about, or marketing departments are already thinking differently about how they spend those dollars. And so what? let's get crazy and let's propose things that work like that. As you said before, we once again, cause the good, hardworking people to not deal with this. I, I'm thinking back to last Friday's show um, when we talked about Carolina, or maybe it was Monday, talking about Carolina not doing um, live action anymore and going to the, the blue-white scrimmage where you have to pay to go to it, whereas uh, uh, live action would have been free. And several comments, Coach, we saw this in the Discord this week, the Locked on Tar Heels Discord, where people are saying, like, man, I, I hate this because now I can't just go show up and it's taking more money out of my pocket. And I know as a coach, man, that grieves you. It, it does. And why was that? The, why were we at the game on, on Saturday? We're, we're there raising money because we our guys are not on full scholarships. We don't want to ask mom and dad for, for money. We're not going to go out and ask a flyers and, and have the grandma and grandpa, you know, send money in. Uh, they're paying tuition. They're paying for their room and board. So that's how we find a way to, 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 to generate more money doing other things. I personally, I don't think Hubert liked late night. I don't think that was part of his personality with the, the skits and the dances. And that all took time uh, and it took away from practice time. Uh, I hate our, our moonlight madness. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with it. Uh, the guys like it because they get to show off. But it takes a, a night away from us being able to practice. And um, be honest, we don't have enough days to practice to prepare anyway. Uh, and we're still going to do it. We, we've got it in a couple of weeks. But. Uh, again, it's not something that I overly enjoy because I just want to we want to work. We want to prepare. And that's what practice is about. I think Hubert feels the same way. So he gets a chance to to get a good scrimmage against a very good team and and make some NIL money. I think it's a win win for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And and in this specific instance, it'll be his own team with the blue white scrimmage uh, before they head down to Memphis, which is great. Right. Um, and folks, we're not going to hit on this tonight, but just as part of all this is the new potential ACC rev sharing model, which is going to be, yes, there's the new on court success already, but then there's a, a new proposal that might have to deal, uh, with rewarding schools for how valuable they are to television partners. So that's in the works as a possibility right now. We'll talk more about that probably next week or as more information on it comes out, but th that's all part of this too. Where does the money come from? So, Coach, multiple recruiting targets recently have canceled future visits after their North Carolina visit. Is this good news for the Heels? I want to get your take on that. We'll do that in just a second. Right after I tell you about game time, going to live events is the absolute best when you don't have a talent feed tacked on top. Music, theater, comedy, man. And finally, college football is back as well. And I'm looking forward to making all new memories this college sports season. Well, great news. When you're getting tickets for this year, game time has a new feature called game time picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. It filters out the fluff to show you only the incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. So whether it's game time ticket coverage, the lowest price guarantee, or the panoramic views from your seat that you can find in the app, game time has got you covered. How about this Carolina James Madison game coming up on Saturday? You can get row B on the 30-yard line right behind the Carolina bench for just $76. That is a great find. But if you're not wanting to shell out quite that much, you can get in the building into Keenan for $29 each and just be there, man. That is a great deal for this game. It should be a good one. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for $20 off. Terms apply. Download the game time app today. What time is it? Game time. 
Coach, earlier this week, we we talked about Derek Dixon, who had recently visited Carolina and then ultimately visited or uh, canceled an upcoming visit to Arizona and, um, you know, was planning on uh, announcing, as far as we can tell, his plans for college on September 27th. So coming up very soon here. Then also a couple of days ago, Braylon Mullins, who was on campus last week, the smooth, smooth shooting guard from Indiana, canceled his future Duke visit. But the uh, initially it was, but still is kind of, you know, planning to go on his Tennessee visit upcoming. And then on Wednesday, it uh, I read from Adam Zagoria, Zag's blog, Actually, Mullins is also going to not go on this Tennessee visit. Now, there's other schools in play for both of these players. But, Coach, my question to you is not to ask you to speculate on what either of these guys are doing, because that would that would be silly for us to try to do that. But I do want to ask you how you, as a head coach, read a move like that from a prospective student-athlete. Yeah, I think the first thing it hits me is that um... – you're, you're recruiting the right type of people because these people are respectful of these other programs and saying, hey, we don't want to waste your time. We don't want to waste your money. Um, if we've already made a decision that we're not coming to you, um, I don't want to just go through the process so we get a free trip to Arizona or a free trip to, to Knoxville. Um, that shows me a lot about the character of that kid and that family. That we're just we're, we're going to narrow the list to, to to what it is and we're just not going to extend it longer. We're not going to try to drag this process out and we're just going to be honest to those people. I think that shows me that they've they've made relationships with those coaches in a way that they care enough to say, hey, listen, you know, this is this is not going to happen. Uh, let, let's just be honest. I'm gonna, we just want to waste your time. So here's what we're going to do. I, I actually like that. Um, obviously, that we feel like that gives us more hope uh, if I'm a Carolina coach. Um, if you're buying a house and, you're, you know, people are looking at multiple houses and, you know, they, they're not going to look at any more after they've looked at a couple. You feel like, hey, we, we've at least got a shot. Uh, so I think it is good news. It feels like, you know, it's a positive step. But uh, I do think it, it says a lot about the families that they're honest in, in going about their business this way. It, like, let's imagine you were on the Tommy Lloyd or John Shire or Rick Barnes side of this where you're on the, hey, sorry, we're not coming. It, are your feelings the same? Like, hey, I, I appreciate you not wasting our time or money. Probably not. I'm probably, if I'm on their staff, I'm probably mad because, hey, all we got to do is get them on. And that's how we feel about Milligan. We feel like if I can just get that kid on campus, so don't, don't say no. Let me, let me at least get it, get him, get to meet our staff, get to meet our players, get to see our, our facilities, get to, to eat in our, you know, in our town and see our favorite restaurants and all those type of things. Um, so you're, you're disappointed. You know, you, you may appreciate the honesty, but at the same time, uh, I guarantee there's a lot of time and money that's already been invested in those kids from those programs. So uh, they're probably not feeling too too good about it right now. That uh, makes a ton of sense. So if you were Hubert Davis on the happy side of this, what what would your next steps be, Coach? I just I think you need to stay connected, um, and people stay connected in different ways. You got to know that kid. Does that kid want to text every day? Does he want a phone call every day? Or is he good every couple of days? Or do you have uh, that Monday night? OK, at seven o'clock, that's when we call. But you've got to be consistent with what you're doing. Make sure you don't become a, a overbearing. But, you know, and, and there's, there's good communication to be able to do that. Hey, what's the best way? You want to get a text every day? You want to get a call every day? We'll do it. You know, who do you want it from? You want it from the head coach? You want it from the lead recruiter or however it's going to be? And you just got to be consistent with, with what you've been doing to get to this point. Um, and just be very honest and open. And, hey, this is where we are. This is who we are. And, uh, and just keep that developing that friendship, that that relationship throughout the whole uh, process until a decision is made. That's really helpful. And, and I loved your um, house buying analogy. I think that's really helpful because most of us aren't head basketball coaches who are recruiting kids. But uh, most of us have been out looking for a house and you know when it's the one and you don't want to waste time looking at others. That That is really helpful to me as well. Um, and just like you talked about, obviously it doesn't guarantee that Carolina is going to land one or both of these guys, but you know, the percentages certainly go up. If there are, let's say there's 10 schools in the mix, you got a 10% chance. If you cancel two of those visits, baby, we're going to cut that pie into eight pieces instead of 10. And I'm going to eat some more pecans. Uh, and that's going to make me happy at Thanksgiving dinner. So, um, yeah, I, I much, I much more prefer my chances one out of eight 
to one out of 10. And uh, th that really cuts it down, especially when one of those you're getting rid of on the Braylon Mullen side of things is your arch rival, the Duke Blue Devils. I mean, that that's an encouraging sign in itself. Yeah, one. one of, I mean, Coach Williams, one of his famous quotes about recruiting is, yes and no are good answers. The, the maybe are the ones that are not. So if, if you get a yes, that's great. But in this situation to be Arizona, Tennessee, to get a no, sometimes that is a good thing because then you can move on. And uh, even though you spend a lot of time and money on a kid, um, you just have to just move on. So um, I think that maybe we're still in that situation. I, I just want an answer maybe quicker now. Hey, okay, we've cut it down. You know, let, let's let's see if we can make a decision sooner rather than later because we still got a long list of guys that we've offered. Um, so we need to kind of need to know what's going on. And one of those young men is the number one recruit in the entire class 25. He's going to be on campus this weekend. That's AJ DeBanza. All the more reason to beat up on James Madison when they come to town on Saturday. Let that man know how much. Uh, he is wanted and loved. Remember, also, this was initially supposed to be the Eric Riba visit this weekend, but Carolina was on the the no side of one of those. Hey, we're not we're going to cancel that visit. So uh, Carolina just having Debanza in this weekend, and so man, uh, we're going to be waiting to hear with bated breath how that visit goes, folks. Let me pump this book again. If you do not have your copy of Carolina Basketball School History, Stories, and Drills written by our good man, Coach Bill Robinson, you need to make sure you get that on Amazon or by emailing him directly at wdrobinson at milligan.edu. Uh, man, it's going to be uh, – we were just texting earlier today, man. We're getting close to Christmas time. This would make a great gift for a Carolina fan in your family or maybe even that Duke or NC State fan who you just want to twist the knife in on them a little bit uh, would be a good, like, white elephant gift for them. Folks, uh, we want to thank you as always for joining us. Coach, on a crazy busy week for you as you start practice, thank you for making time with us. We're so excited to keep track of how the Buffaloes do this year. And uh, man, really uh, interested to continue hearing how things are going. If you haven't subscribed to the show on video and audio, make sure you do so so that you don't miss a second of Locked on Tar Heels. If you're not part of the Locked on Tar Heels Discord chat, Man, we'd love to have you there. It's free to join, and the link is in the show notes. Come for the Tar Heels. Stay for the great community. Also, there's a brand new opportunity, the Locked on Tar Heels Insider Program, where you can text with me directly one-on-one -on -one, anytime you want. I send texts throughout the day with stats or updates or what's coming on on the show today. And also, you get free access to all of my stats and charts and data all on a Google Drive. It's a free two-week trial, and then after that, just five bucks a month to be part of this. We'd love to have you as part of that as well. It's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. We'll talk to you again tomorrow, but until then, peace.